welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some MIV whole stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first MIV whole story. This says, am I the a-hole for forcing my husband to choose between divorce and being a house husband while I work full time to support the family? I'm guessing he has a choice to be a house husband or a working husband, right? Um, because it's not like, you know, do all the laundry or I'm going to divorce you. I'm guessing he's also not working and refusing to work or can't work or I don't know. Let's just get right into it. Long story short, my husband, 37 male, used to work to support the family while I, 36 female, stayed home taking care of our two-year-old daughter. Last month, he lost his job and told me he felt exhausted and wasn't eager to do anything. I said okay and offered to work so he could look after our daughter at home and get some rest until he feels better. By the way, our daughter goes to daycare, so it's mainly some housework and picking her up. But he, see, but he said no, he needs his time to be completely free. I got furious because this means either I work while taking care of our daughter or our family will face significant financial pressure. And you just want a peaceful fucking summer vacation, the likes of which you haven't seen since you were 11? But I stepped back anyway and had a hell of a month doing everything while he hung out with his friends and played PS5. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore and told him he had to choose between being a house husband or a divorce. He chose the fur for he chose the first, but it felt forced. I kept questioning myself, was I too harsh? Any good advice would be appreciated. Update. I never thought this would draw so much attention. I'm trying to read as many comments as I can and I really appreciate your opinions, especially those pointing out things I should have told him and didn't. I've decided to show him the post after work and see if we can have a real talk based on that. Again, thank you all again. No, you are not the a-hole. I don't understand why a full grown man with a wife and a child would think it's okay to take a month off of being a functioning working adult, a father and a husband. I'm sorry, we don't get vacations from those kinds of jobs, okay? I've seen this before and it literally burns me up inside. Burns me up inside. No, you do not get it again. What mom, what good mom, what good mom gets a month long vacation from being a parent? Sir, we don't even get a vacation when we're sick. I was reading stories through a migraine last week. Okay, you do what you gotta do. My husband is currently unemployed. He had an issue with his job. He thought things were gonna go through with a different job. The story kind of changed. I'm not worried at all. He hasn't worked for about a week. We have savings. We are okay. He is very stressed that he doesn't have a job. I know he will have a job within another week or two. And that's just based on the fact that a lot of these corporate companies, you need to do the first interview with this guy and the second interview with this guy and the third interview with this guy. And it takes time to schedule those all. If they could get them all scheduled, like boom, 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 he'd have a job in a week. That man has done so much around the house, okay? He is doing dishes, he is doing laundry, he is 100% taking care of the kids, he is taking care of the dogs, he is taking care of the sprinklers outside. He he is just, you know, he's not on vacation because he doesn't get to go on vacation from being a father and a husband. So anyway, let me stop ranting. No, you're not the a-hole. Your husband sounds like an 11 year old trying to have a cool summer vacation. That's not how life works. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Not the a-hole. Adults with children don't get to have their time completely free. Next says this, not the a-hole. It is one thing to not jump back in a job. It's another to ignore your family completely. OP, your husband can spend some time, your some time while your daughter's in daycare to seek out therapy as well. No, literally. The thing is, is that like, if you wanted to take a week off, two weeks off to just like 
catch your breath, recover from whatever like fucked up work situation you had before, I would understand. You don't get to check out from being a dad and father still, and you need to go back to work eventually. Anyway, next comment says she's a saint for lasting a month. And last says she was a single mom for a month. Then what was the point of the husband? The husband lost his 24 seven free time when he married and has kids, a decision which he took willingly. You did this to yourself, sir. I don't think anyone else forced you to have a child. You are now responsible for them for the rest of your life. Congratulations. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for pushing my wife when she hit our son? Why did she hit him? Because if it's slap my kid's hand, or let him get burnt on the stove, slap the shit out of him. Cause I would rather him feel the sting of a slap than the burn of a stove, right? I'm not taking joy in smacking my kid. It is the lesser of two evils in that instance. If that's not the situation, oh no, miss ma'am. Let's get right into it. I, 32 male, am married to my wife, 31 female. We have a son together, six male. Last night I came home from work early at 6 p.m and caught my wife violently slapping my son. I was appalled by this as I've never seen her do it and I don't agree with that kind of punishment. So I rushed over and told her to stop, but she didn't listen to me. So I pushed her off him with relative force. She told my family, including my parents who called me and berated me saying, I'm an a-hole for pushing my wife. So now I'm wondering, am I the a-hole? Um, no, let me tell you something. That is a person who is just violent and like evil by nature to repeatedly slap violently someone so much smaller than them. Cause let me tell you something, kids really do freaking pull it out of you, man. They just pull that anger and fucking irritation right out of your soul, okay? And let me tell you something. Has there been a couple times where my son has done something in the moment and I've like given him a little push like, no, don't fucking, don't hit your brother like that. He doesn't really hit his brother, but you know what I mean? That is my gut reaction as far as physical things go with my kid. Just a little, hey, what are you, what are you doing? Like a, like a physical like barrier, you know? If I were to actually hit my kid for punishment, I feel like it would be like a, in the heat of the moment, he says something really bad and he gets like a backhand on the chest. If I were to hit my kid, which I don't because I control those urges, but if I were to release the urges that I currently have, it would probably be like, hey, don't say that. But I don't do that because I'm a grown woman and I can I can control myself. I don't, I don't hit people in the store. I don't hit people at work. I don't hit people at the, gra at the gas station. I don't hit people at the farmer's market. I don't hit my kid. It, it just really makes it really makes sense that um you don't you don't deal you don't even deal with criminals like if someone gets arrested for murder you don't hit them first right so i'm not gonna hit my kid anyway this is bringing it out of me y'all the fact that she was violently slapping this child this six-year-old child my child's almost five so you're telling me in a year oh oh no ma'am Oh no, ma'am, I would have done worse than pushed her. I would have punched her in her fucking face. I would have slapped her in her fucking face. I would have grabbed her by the back of her hair and yanked her so fucking hard that she flew across the goddamn room if she was violently and repeatedly slapping my child. And you like how it happened on the day he came home from work early? You think this hasn't happened in the past? You think this is the first time this bitch has laid hands on your fucking kid and you just didn't know because you were at work? Now fuck that bitch. <sighs> I can't believe the flames didn't come out for all that. Oh. Anyway, let's get to the comments. This says, not the a-hole. Your wife was physically abusing your child. While physical violence is never the answer, your immediate action was to protect your son from harm. Your wife's family is attempting to shift blame and gaslight you, but your priority is the well-being of your child. Yup. 
Next says, just to add on to this, because I think it's an important clarification, violence is never the answer unless someone is currently using violence and isn't done. Then it's about degrees of violence used. If someone is violently assaulting you, violence is absolutely the answer. If a group of violent terrorists are shooting up your neighborhood and an easy escape for everyone isn't a finger snap away, violence is absolutely an answer. Yeah, I just told you I would have ripped the hair. I would have snatched the hair right out of that bitch's head. So I guess violence is the answer for me, especially when you're hurting little kids. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole? My friend is having an affair. We plan to tell her husband. Ooh, you know I love the messy ones. You know I love the messy ones. Let's get right in. I've known Anna, female 38, since we were in high school. We are a part of a group of five. Now we hang out as families for Christmas, birthdays, Easter, etc. It has been like this for over 10 years. My partner, Greg, male 39, is good friends with Anna's husband, Darren, male 39. Anna recently told me she is having an affair with one of their family friends, who is also Darren's sister's ex-partner. At the time, I remained non-judgmental and supportive. Once the information set in and I realized how disloyal and gross the whole situation was, my sense of justice and moral compass came into play. Darren is a good man. Anna says he is a wonderful father and husband, but she just doesn't feel the connection with him anymore, despite faking it the last six months to keep her secret under wraps. Oh, it's messy, it's dirty, it's low down. I knew keeping this from Greg may backfire on me if he found out I also hid the secret, so I told him. He is shattered for his mate, it is, and it is eating at him. I've told Anna that, Greg's, that Greg knows. She's pissed at me for the betrayal, expecting me to take it to my grave. She knows they're catching up soon, and Greg plans to tell him. Anna has not asked for a separation because they have an overseas trip coming in up coming up in October. She has told me financially that she can't leave, keeping in mind she regularly gets expensive treatments like Botox and taking roids to have her look her best. We want to tell Darren about her affair in two weeks. Will we be the a-holes? Side note, someone, some have asked why we are waiting. Greg works away. He is home in two weeks, closer to one and a half weeks now, but feels like due to the nature of the conversation, it should be in person. He knows Darren will be very upset possibly angry and wants to be there to support him in those initial moments I feel like I should also mention there are kids involved do we tell him via text sooner no I would say your plan to do it in person is a great idea because what if he gets pissed and like gets on the road and he's like I'm going to see her right now and then like gets into a car accident or something no 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 tell him when you can be there to be the buffer and the safe zone and the like sane point of view for a little while no wait the two weeks it's uh been six months so another two weeks ain't gonna make a big difference to him in the long run I say you're not the a-hole, but let's see what Reddit has to say. She doesn't want to tell him because they have an overseas trip coming up. Likely a trip he's paying for and she wants to leech off him? Tell him. Tell him. OP respond responds with simply, we will. And the last comment says, he will want to sell her tickets and cancel reservations. The sooner he knows, the likely the less money he'll lose. I put this up above, but he needs to freeze his credit immediately and contact any credit card companies to cancel cards and get an update on money she spent, either running up the bill now or spending it on her affair partner. Same with bank accounts, college savings accounts for the kids, you name it. Her money train is about to derail. Unless she's stupid, she's going to try and get every penny out that she can. Very true. This big conversation with Darren should include all those things. Feel bad for the man, but you guys are doing the right thing by telling him the truth. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for telling an elderly coworker, you can go F yourself after she told me my swimwear was not appropriate for the trip. Ma'am, I think you better worry about your own ass and leave mine out of it, but let's see. I, 26 female, work for an amazing small engineering company, but I've always had an issue with a woman named Cheryl. 
which is funny because I have a really good friend named Cheryl. Cheryl is a holdover office manager from when the current owner's dad founded the company and the company is in her queendom. I actually feel very sorry for her because she's divorced. Her kids don't speak with her and I think the company is the only thing that she has going on in her life. She is like a grandma to the current owner, but he has admitted that he can't wait until she retires because she is overbearing with him too. The company had an amazing year and our owner decided that we essentially we were essentially going to shut down for the month of June and he was going to host an optional retreat to Mexico where he would pay for all food, drinks, and accommodations, but we had to pay for our plane ticket. When I found out that Cheryl was not planning on going, I could not sign up fast enough. <laughs> I flew down with a friend slash coworker, and the second we got our bags put away, it was bikinis on and straight up to the swim bar. On the way down the hallway, we ran smack into Cheryl. We tried to be pleasant, but she looked me up and down like I was dressed like a street walker and she looked so disgusted. My friend and I walked along smirking that we weren't in the queendom and made jokes about finding Cheryl a nice man so she'd either get laid or kidnapped. <laughs> By the time we got to the pool, Cheryl had sent out a group text reminding us that we were on a work trip and we should choose our outfits to reflect the prestige of the company paying for the trip. We could not stop laughing and we agreed that our best bet was to avoid Cheryl for the week. Yeah, fuck that bitch. When we were on our way back to the room, Cheryl intercepted us in the hallway. She seriously must have been staring out her peephole waiting on us. And she said that when she sent the group text, she meant that I should change out of that immediately. She said while pointing basically at my ass. I said, I was sorry, Cheryl, but this isn't a work trip and my bikini was totally appropriate for the resort. She said, we are a company founded on Christian principles and we should dress as such. I suck so bad at confrontation and this was one of those things where five minutes after I had a million witty things to say but all I could come up with was that I will wear a sarong in the hotel but this is all I brought for the pool and beach. She said you get paid well enough go buy something more appropriate. The get paid enough comment made me see red because that is so none of her business and I worked my ass off through a male dominated field and shit jobs and took a huge risk to work for a small company because I wanted a job that cared about me. I told her Cheryl I hate confrontation but you can go fuck yourself that was so out of line get it girl for the first time since i met cheryl she was actually speechless and just turned around and went in her room and closed the door my friend thought it was the funniest thing she'd ever seen and said she was so proud of me for sticking up for myself initially i felt good about it too but ever since yesterday i am just racked with guilt and i feel like a major a-hole i feel like there were a million other ways i could have handled it and i should not have let cheryl see that she upset me she is a very lonely person and though i don't like her i I don't need to say such cruel things to her. I feel like an a-hole. Am I the a-hole? You said to go fuck yourself. She said you're dressed inappropriately and you're making the company look bad. That sounds like a tit for tat in my opinion. I feel like Cheryl got what she deserved, but there's some edits. Let's see what it says. For the people asking, my swimsuit was from a company called Coco Loba. They really only make one style, and I guess it's probably best described as cheeky and not really a thong, but they have a tendency to ride up my butt since I have wider hips. Yes, my cheeks were visible, but it was far from dental floss. Edit two, wow, people are really focused on the swimwear i do have pics of the swimsuit on me when i was tubing with my family last week on instagram but not sure if that's safe to send out a link this is my first ever post on a sub like this so i guess i can get some input on that also my friend actually had a one piece but it's a full-on thong it's very cute on her but she didn't get the same look from cheryl because she had a cover-up on her bottom when we were in the hotel Oh, fuck, Cheryl. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Not the a-hole. We are a community founded on Christian principles. Okay, but not everyone is a Christian. And it's a bikini. Tons of people wear bikinis. She has a serious stick up her ass. OP responds, the funny thing is, is that we weren't... OP responds, the funny thing is that wasn't even true when our current owner's dad founded the company. His wife is Jewish. <laughs> 
Next says, Christians usur usurping Jewish practices is totally on brand. Their prophet is literally Jewish. Last says, Christians do wear bikinis. I'm a Catholic and wear bikinis and so do all my Christians friends, Catholic, Baptist, Episcopal, etc. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Cheryl's being a bitch. Fuck Cheryl, she can go fuck herself. Don't forget we have a playlist of over 300 MIV whole videos up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.